Hey folks, thanks for tuning in again. Today something quick and easy and uh, something a little different. I'll be cleaning this mouse. Now, it's no secret that I am a big fan of the puck mouse. Ask anyone that knows me, I love these things. And uh, whenever I get them, I clean them up, fix them up, test them, make sure they still work. And then I toss them in a box because, you know, I only have <laughs> have use for one mouse. This was in a recent box full of recyclables and it is sticky and disgusting. And let me see if you can see that. Some kind of residue on there. There's all kinds of dirt on the inside. Probably a lot of tape residue on this cable. Although the cable itself is in pretty good shape. It's not as yellow as some of the ones I've seen. But um, I've been asked before, how do you clean these mice? So figured might as well do a little quick five minute video. And let's see if the angle is all right. Yeah, it's decent. So let's take it apart. First, you take off these collared rings, whatever color your puck mouse might be. And I just clip my nails, so don't really have good grip on it. You lift it up, and then you pop it out. And this thing is really sticky. So, go to one side, lift it up, pop it out. And take the other side, do the same. And it'll pop right off like that. Ah, oh, this thing's gross. There we go. Let's get rid of this tape. start with the exterior and then I'll open it up clean the inside all you need is a microfiber cloth and of course your trusty Windex with vinegar in it. vinegar will clean anything including nasty puck mice I don't know what this stuff is, but it is quite disgusting. And even vinegar is having a hard time getting it off, which is uh, actually a first. Vinegar never lets me down. I should have worn gloves. This is gross. some progress although this, this is probably gonna need more than five minutes work usually these are pretty easy to clean but this thing is particularly nasty See, it's already looking a lot better all you need is some vinegar and yes my vinegar goes missing often label it now when you're cleaning these covers these colored covers 
you want to make sure you properly support them from the inside with your fingers because these can be very very brittle just because of their age oh man even the inside is gross what the hell happened to this thing and if you're holding it like this and you start cleaning this and putting a lot of pressure on it there's a good chance it'll snap right off so always support it with your finger on the other side of where you're cleaning later on but most of the stickiness is gone and it actually doesn't have a scratch on it it's a really good shape uh, okay. okay where are my gloves at <laughs> it's a bad day to run out of gloves oh wait there they are It takes a lot for me to reach for gloves. So trust me when I say this thing is gross. Now, sorry if I'm blocking this with my hands from the angle the camera's at, but you're not missing much. I'm just rubbing this thing up and down the cloth with vinegar on it. This video might be so boring that I end up not even publishing it, but I've thought that about some of my videos in the past, like, oh, this is way too boring. I'm not even going to bother publishing it. But then someone tells me, no, 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 I, it's interesting, publish it. And I must admit, I watched some pretty boring videos myself on other channels that I think to myself, no one in their right mind would watch this, because it's just too boring. So I guess there's content out there for anyone and everyone. So this might get two views if I'm lucky. But if it helps someone clean their puck and preserve it, it was worth it. All right, the worst of it is off. Pick up the cloth and do the rest like this. When you're cleaning old plastics, let the cloth do the work. Don't put insane amount of pressure on it. You could probably clean it faster if you put a lot of pressure on it, but it's also more risk. So. Just take the, take the extra minute, run the cloth back and forth a few more times. It'll have the same effect eventually. All right, a few tiny scratches on this side, but looking pretty decent, unlike the cloth. So, I'll worry about the cable last. I'm gonna open this up first. And see what's inside. This is a, uh, let's see, two screws that are Phillips. And actually I'm skipping ahead. First you wanna take this cover plate off by turning it and it'll pop right off. That'll give you access to the ball. And clean the inside. Now you could take a knife and clean these wheels, spin them, scrape, spin them, scrape, but I prefer to open them up all the way. There's two screws here that are Phillips. Don't ask me which number Phillips, I just try different bits until I find one that fits. 
Okay, this works and this was a PH0 screw bit. This has some flex to it, so I'm hoping it's not brittle and it'll pop apart. There's two clips here. One there, one there. This cover sits in there. So you gotta lift it and pull it out, which sometimes works, sometimes can take infuriating long, infuriatingly long time. So those are the hoops. And it's not looking too bad on the inside. There's some crud coming out. Nothing too bad. And that's all there is to it. Now you can pull the cable out and take it apart even further. I usually just leave it hanging like this. Leave the cable where it's at. Because this is all you need access to, really. And you want to grab the dust bunnies. Nice pieces of previous owner, cat hair, all that good stuff. Just go around with some tweezers. Get all those bunnies out. Especially at the ends of the, the axles right there, where they clip into the plastic, that's where hair and all kinds of crud starts building up. So take a minute, take that all out. Now, if you're having issues where, when you move the mouse, you hear terrible squeaking, just apply not even a full drop of oil right there, where these axles clip into the plastic, and you'll be good as new. Okay. <clears throat> these axles are pretty easy to clean you just rotate them clean whatever crud is on them and that's it this white wheel is a little trickier there's a spring on it that controls the tension so take some tweezers grab that spring unhook it from the white wheel and that'll give you a little bit more access to clean that wheel out now this white piece doesn't come out, see, it's in there. I'm sure there's a way to get it out, because there's a hole here, you can probably apply some pressure, pop it out. I am not going to do that, because I have all the access I need from the side here. Again, pull out the dust bunnies that are undoubtedly in there after, what, 19 years? Ooh, gross.
Don't worry about getting all of it. A few hairs or fiber, whatever, whatever's in there. It's not gonna hurt functionality. But get as much as you can. On the white wheel, it's really easy to see. So all the dirt will be black. So just keep going until all that is gone. Oh, nice. Okay. As for the black wheels, just use one finger to rotate it. Get something not too sharp. And just scrape everything on that axle off. Now you don't want something sharp enough to damage the axle. Because if you make any type of scratches or grooves on it, that'll just trap dirt faster. Just keep scraping until everything is smooth. And then move on to the other side. think you get it all it's gonna be a lot of powdery crap sitting on the axle that's when q-tips come in get the worst of it off just let it fall down I'm not going to narrate everything I'm doing because you're a smart individual. If your eyes work, you can see what you got to clean until you're done cleaning it. If your eyes don't work or don't work as well, you wouldn't be doing this to begin with. In that case, feel free to ship your puck to me and I'll gladly clean it for you. But there's really not much to it. Okay, so these axles are clear, the, the end points are clean, dust bunnies have been removed from within the white block. Now the white wheel itself is still pretty nasty. Hold it on the inside with one finger and just start. Yeah, it's really good to keep it in the frame. Just start scraping. Turn the wheel, scrape, turn the wheel, scrape until you're done. Now I could tell this has probably been cleaned in the past with something way too sharp. 
because this white wheel is pretty beat up. All kinds of scratches on it. But hey, after 19 years, he's not gonna find one new in the packaging. At least not for free at a recycle center. of it now this white wheel is pretty hard to clean because you can't take it out and it's really hard to access the internals so this white wheel takes the most amount of time to clean and typically gets the dirtiest Okay, now to get rid of all the crud that's in there, compressed air is your friend. for the white wheel. Okay. And now I'm gonna clean it some more from this side. Um, this might be hard to do on camera. I need two hands, one to move the wheel, one to scrape it. Or actually one to hold the wheel steady as I scrape it so it doesn't move. I don't know if the microphone is picking this up, but you can hear the scratching and scraping when I'm hitting the dirt. It's really caked on there. That wheel is actually looking pretty decent right now. So take a Q-tip, loosen up all the dirt and debris that's still in there. Don't worry about getting it out, just loosen it up. And once it's been loosened up, compressed air. Okay, now you can go crazy on this inside, get it 
really, really perfect. But like I said, I already got a ton of these things. So, just going over the basics here. Now these wheels, ah, there we go. These wheels don't do anything. All the sensors are on here. The black wheels will go in between these sensors and measure the speed. Uh, the white wheel, I believe, rubs past this block, this sensor over there. I don't even know anymore. Oh, no, no. What am I talking about? It only has two sensors. X and Y, or X and Z axis, whatever it's called. This is just to hold the pressure on. I'm talking out of my ass, but it's... It's 2 a.m., so I'm allowed. I'm gonna give the black wheels a little bit of treatment with alcohol. Just to get them nice and shiny. Put this off to the side. I'm gonna focus on the ball, get that nice and clean. Again, a little bit of Windex with vinegar. And the microfiber cloth will catch whatever dust is on there. And the vinegar will get whatever grease is on there. Cover plate up a little. Especially around the hole. You want to make sure that's clean. Grab a Q-tip. Poke it around past all the edges. Again, loosen up whatever might be there. And then compress there the rest. Some of these are really nasty. And there's this ridge pattern on the bottom. That can be full of stuff. You're just gonna have to take some uh, tweezers, scrape it all out. It can be pretty time consuming, especially at the corners, but it's worth it. Even though it's on the bottom, you never see it. You'll know it's disgusting and it's there, so might as well clean it up. Now this is the, the top cover with the mouse button on it. I managed to take this apart once and I've never been able to <laughs> recreate it. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. The button piece detaches like that and oh I managed to do it again. And it just lifts out of the hole. Makes it easier to clean. But if you can't manage to get that button out, you're not going crazy. Nine out of 10 times, it doesn't work for me either. It doesn't want to come out. And give that a good vinegar treatment as well. Now there's not much on this cover that can break, but you do have these little plastic tabs. So be careful with those. Focus on the hole, the area where the button usually is. That's where you'll find the most disgusting stuff. And again, to be safe, always support the area that you're cleaning with your finger from the other side. Now this is something that you'll be seeing 
if you're gonna use this mouse, a lot. So you really wanna get every piece of dirt and dust in there. Because once this is on your desk looking all shiny, you don't wanna see that piece of dust in there, so. That takes care of the cover. Now the mouse button itself. And this uh, plastic ring that's attached to the mouse button is by far the most fragile piece of the entire puck. So definitely be careful when you clean that. Because it's supposed to be thin and flexible so that you've got an easy click. But after 19 years, it also means it's the weakest part of the mouse. Sorry if I do half of this out of frame. It's a pretty unusual camera angle. There it is. And now we just put it all back together again. Oh, forgot a piece. See some dirt still in there. It's definitely in a spot where it could be an eyesore, so I'm glad I caught that. Okay. So, putting it back together the other way around, else this print board will fall out. You got these hoops, so it goes in and down, in theory. There. Put screws back in. Find a bit that fits better, so you don't strip the screw. So I switched to a PH1 bit. Should fit a little better. Oh yeah, much better. Most of the sticky stuff off of these covers, but it needed a little bit more love. So let me do that. Now the one that was the hardest to find for me, because I set out to look for all colors, was the, the purple one, or indigo, whatever they call it. The purple one. And it was so disgusting that when I pulled it out of the packaging, I thought there is no way this will ever make a comeback, but it did. And when it was still a little wet from the Windex, that color was so amazing. It really is the nicest color they made for the puck and for the keyboard. The iMac itself looked terrible in my opinion. But hey, I'm a puck lover. I don't expect anyone to understand, or everyone to understand. Alright, this one has some really stubborn 
くんとはねと、えー、Now is this or is this not the most thrilling video you've seen all week? Be honest, let me know in the comments. I know it's like watching Jurassic Park for the first time. You're on the edge of your seat. Surely. Okay, putting these back. There's the two notches on the side, and there's one notch here. This goes in first. Up there, and then just push it down. And, like me, put it the wrong way around. Two sides to this. One is flat, one is a little indent. That's, of course, the side that should go to where the cable, to the side where the cable is. So you get a nice fit. Good as new. Now for the cable. <clears throat> now this cable can handle a lot of pressure. I mean, don't put your weight on it and hang from it, but you can easily hold the mouse as you pull that cable through a rag to clean it. That's not a problem. Just don't overdo it. Run it back and forth a few times. Okay, I feel good enough to take the glove off. Let's feel a few spots where some of the tape residue is still clinging on. All right, that's one clean cable. Now, to get these kinks out, all you have to do is put some uh, thumbtacks in the wall and just hang it up like that. It'll take a few weeks, but the weight of this puck will eventually straighten the cable out. So it'll be a lot less annoying to use if it's not like that. So, there you have it. I don't know how long I've been recording. No way. It says 40 minutes, but that can't be right. If it is, that's a little sad that it took me 40 minutes to clean the puck, but still, I got one more puck to the collection. And actually, I like this one enough to make it my primary now. And you might ask, primary for what? I play Unreal Tournament with this thing almost weekly, and I love it. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, if it's really dirty, these plastic rings here you can scrape those with a black stick get whatever dirt is on there off in this case pretty clean vinegar it and you're good to go beautiful so that's how you clean a puck mouse. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you still use a puck mouse because I'm dying to know if there's more crazy people like me out there. So let me know and I'll see you next time.